the final speaker of our session, um, Sanjay Zhao, is going to be uh, presenting work at Google about recommending what video to watch next, a multitask ranking system. Hello everyone, so you can see that I'm very excited to be here in the colorful city of Copenhagen to present my work. And uh, never in my lifetime have I been here. So before I came here, I'm a little worried, so I did a little collaborative programming by myself, asking my friends with similar interests as I do, who live in Copenhagen for recommendations. Unfortunately, I don't have, I don't have any friends in Copenhagen. <laughs> <laughs> so what I do instead, I took a search on YouTube and then watched a video introducing Copenhagen, and then clicked the video being recommended to watch next, which is a travel guide, very useful. I take a look on several other videos being recommended again, and again, and again. So after a few hours of YouTube watching, I feel like I became a local expert of Copenhagen, <laughs> even though I've never been here before. So this is just a mere example of showing how recognition system has become more and more importantly and become one of the most important part of our life, because sometimes we do choose social media over traditional media. So today, today I'm really good, um, glad to present our work of recommending what video to watch next as a case study of how we build our multitask ranking and recommendation system at Google. This is a joint work with my awesome collaborators in Google Brain as well as in YouTube. So first I want to talk about why should we care about multitask uh, learning in recommendations ranking systems. So what we care most is actually uh, to understand users' interests. So what we want to do, or we call it user utility. So if user interest by utility is really easy to get, like this little cute puppy wants to have his or her treat, we don't need multitask learning at all. Recognition is relatively easy. However, in real world, user interest might be really complicated. For example, they might have cat videos, they might watch a lot of hockey, play with, uh, hockey videos, but secretly they want to be a volume dancer or something like that. So their user utility is really hard to get by one particular model. So, so that's why usually in some industrial recognition systems, we usually use multiple implicit feedbacks, such as user clicks, user likes, and maybe user survey responses. So each of them cover an aspect of what, the, what users' true utility are. Therefore, it naturally makes a lot of sense to use multitask learning because it can capture multiple signals to uh, infer true user utility, also by doing job optimization of all of the multi, multiple tasks in a single deep neural network based recognition system, we're hoping to learn better representations so that we can perform better on all of the tasks. And that's all of this. This is very practical in training and serving efficiency because we don't need to maintain multiple models, machine learning models for training and serving. So for the rest of this talk, I'm going to first talk about backgrounds and challenges, and then I'm going to introduce two main pieces of, of multitask ranking system. Last, I'm going to share some of our learning experience and future work. So as, more, as many of the modern industry recommendation systems use this two-state recommendation uh, framework containing two parts, retrieval and, and, and ranking, where retrieval tries to filter the corpus of billions of items into a couple, of, couple of thousand or hundreds of candidates, and ranking tries to accurately generate a rank list from those candidates. As this talk is mostly focusing on the ranking part, we do have another paper talk about the retrieval part that has been, will be presented on, on Wednesday. So the case study we're using here is called a YouTube Watch Next recommendation. We are given the video that users are currently been watching, some context features, and we want to provide a run list that users are most likely to watch next. Among many of the challenges of building such industrial large-scale multitask ranking systems, we are particularly interested in these two following challenges. One is that there are oftentimes different and sometimes conflicting objectives. It, it naturally makes a lot of sense if you take a look at what user likes. It might be totally different or somehow different from user survey responses. And the other case is that since we're using user implicit feedbacks that, has, that generate from the user being exposed from a production system, there are naturally some uh, selection biases in our training data as well as in our systems. To tackle those two challenges, we, pro we propose our multitask working framework um, as shown here which takes the input of a combination of query and candidate features, uh, which is a combination of uh, sparse embeddings and dense features, out to several prediction targets, each of which corresponding to a user behavior, such as uh, engagement or satisfactory behaviors. 
And then we learn the combination function to, to combine to the final ranking score and then use that in serving and generating more training data. On the first part, I will talk about uh, how we apply this multi gate V2 Vexpert auto architecture to resolve the task conflicts. And then on the second part, I will talk about how we add this shadow tower to factorize bias from unrelevance in the ranking score uh, by only feeding selection bias related features to the uh, shadow tower. So, first, I will talk about how we apply this model architecture we proposed earlier last year of uh, multi gate V2 Vexpert in our multitask ranking system. As we all know that there are many successful stories of applying multitask learning in traditional machine learning areas such as natural language processing, computer vision, uh, because it tends to learn better representations. However, many times we do see encounter a lot of difficulties in applying that in recognition systems. One of the examples is because there are many um, multi, multiple modalities of feature space, so it's hard to learn the representations better. It can be shown by using a toy example to make this deep neural network fit into two sign functions where we control the correlation of the sign functions. On the right hand side, you can actually see the loss curve. When the task correlation is high, multitask learning improves a lot, but when the task correlation is low, it's even worse than training separately. This might naturally make a lot of sense because there are a lot of conflict happening when you're doing back propagation um, um, on the shared bottom hidden layers, where all the parameters, where all the tasks need to share all of them. Therefore, we make the model architecture change to this multi gate mutual expert models, where first we introduce the mutual expert layers, which is known to learn better modularization of the input values. And then each of the tasks will have their own gating network, so that the task can select a subset of the expert to share due to task commonality, and a subset of the expert not to share due to task conflicts. Uh, our watch next ranking model using a, what we call shared <coughs> uh, model architecture. We replace that into this multi gate V2 expert model, where on the live experiment results, you do see a significant improvement of this model architecture compared to the baseline model architecture. And even when we're increasing the model size, the, the, the gap between those two model architectures is even bigger compared to the larger MMO model with the larger shared model model. Here we show visualization of utilization of the, of the expert for each of the tasks, where you can see for the engagement uh, tasks, they naturally share a lot of uh, many experts. Well, for the for the satisfaction task, they choose some subset of experts to share. Next, I'm going to switch here and talk about how we add a shadow tower to model selection bias. One of the examples of selection bias is actually called position bias, where user tends to click items being shown on higher positions, not only because it's relevant, maybe, but also because it's just shown on the top. This is very much reflected by our training data where you can see the click-through rate has been dropped significantly with the position is low. This is a combination effect between, relevant, between that relevance and bias. So what we propose is to very just simply factorize the final ranking score into two parts where the main model takes input of all of the features try to learn the relevance part. The shadow power will be only be feeding to the features that relate to selection bias, for example positions, to learn the bias part. The two part will be subdivided into one final logic and pass through a sequence uh, activation function. And for multi for multi task data, we only apply this on the engagement tasks such as clicks, so that uh, and then keep the satisfaction in task as it is. <coughs> Here shows the learned bias on the bottom figure, where we can see that we nicely compensate uh, some of the bias that we can show on the, on the in our training data. On the live term result, we do compare the shadow tower approach with several baseline methods, and we see significant improvement. <laughs> so, at the very last, I want to share some of our learning experiments on applying and developing model architecture research for large-scale multitask ranking systems. As we all know, that there are many successful stories on developing novel neural architectures, uh, neural model architectures in machine learning areas. However, we do observe a lot of uh, difficulties when applying them to recommendation system setup. This is usually because one of the following reasons, for example, there are multi modality of feature input space, and because we're training on large scale and multiple ranking uh, objectives, they're relatively unstable. And uh, one of the key characteristics for recognition systems is actually the noisy and locally sparse distributed training data. All these factors add together is really making our model very sensitive to all of the training dynamics, even like just since while we're using distributed training, there's many bad Adding more, because we are serving on large scale, uh, scale traffic, we need to calculate about training and serving trade offs 
where many of the powerful models cannot be applied because they cannot be served. Last but not least, as I mentioned in this talk, besides selection bias, there are many other types of biases in our, uh, in our system, so that by simply, for example, increase the resolution that model size may not work due to this evaluation challenges. Last, we are actually working on many future directions. For example, we are discovering routing model architecture for multitask learning. We are trying to automatically learn to better factorize the relevance and bias, and we are doing model compression for serving cost. And all of those future directions can be your future directions because we are very Thank you. So let's thank all of the speakers in the section.